Hello and welcome to ATV News. I'm Shalama Lawson with your top stories this Wednesday evening. Police in Zimbabwe have charged a 30th MDCT activist over the killing in May last year of a police officer in Glenview, Harare. Jackson Mabota, the deputy chairman of the party's youth assembly for Glenview South, was arrested at his home on Tuesday and charged with the murder of Inspector Petros Muteza. Mabota becomes the 30th MDC member to be arrested in connection with the death of the police inspector. Police say that new information has come to light that has led them to this arrest. In South Africa, continuing labor arguments are having a negative impact on the reputation of the government and, crucially, on the country's currency. The rent dropped to a three-year low this week at the end of a slide that has seen it lose over 6% of its value against the dollar in the last fortnight. The government has been criticized as it stands aside to allow labor companies and unions argue out their differences. In Zambia, over 30 vehicles have been burnt to ashes after fire tore through a Lusaka Kanyama compound car park. The cause of the fire is not yet known and an estimate of the damage is yet to be announced, but it is thought that many of the vehicles affected were public transport minibuses. In the UK, a Zimbabwean asylum seeker has admitted that he caused the death of an aspiring young model when he drove the wrong way on the M62 motorway. Wilfred Museka, who is based in Manchester, had been at the wheels of his Renault Megan when he hit Rebecca Kane on September the 15th. Maseka pleaded guilty to a charge of causing death by dangerous driving when he appeared in court. He will be sentenced next month and he has been remanded into custody until the date of the hearing. Today we had the sad news about the passing of former Zimbabwean cricketer and national team coach Kevin Curran. Curran was 53 years old and Zimbabwe cricket have said he collapsed while jogging in Mutare but the exact cause of his death is not yet known. He scored 287 runs in 11 games for Zimbabwe and took 9 wickets as a bowler. He was also one of the most effective overseas players in English cricket and in August 2005 he became the Zimbabwe national coach. Welcome to another episode of Zim Talk. I've got another fantastic guest in my studio hot seat today. Joining me is Sasha Makani Jameson, who is, amongst other things, a businessman, he's got his own clothing line, entrepreneur, and interestingly, also a gospel singer. So, thanks for joining us, Sasha. Thank you very much for having me. We'd better talk about the clothing line first. Um, where did that all begin? Well, the clothing line started off, I'd say, it was to be true, we started off with friends complimenting my clothes and my shirts this time I wear nice shirt, people take a lot of interest in that. So as it went further and further and further, I just thought instead of me just wearing nice shirts and not telling people I'm getting them from, I might as well start selling some and designing my own products and see how that goes. And surprisingly it went very well. So what kind of things do you sell? Uh, at the moment, I'm only doing coats, jackets, and shirts. Uh, and the company is called? MRJ Fashion. And how have you found business going in the UK, people buying the stuff? Depending on the seasons, for example, the coats are doing very well, because obviously seasons change On summer, it was okay in the beginning, died down in the middle. But I'll say it depends on the season. Uh, one topic always on the news in England is about the global recession, failing economics, you know, the, there was a real crisis going on. Have you seen that affect your business in any way? I'd love to use that as, as an excuse. Well, for my business, I'll say it's the people who've got the money for it, who are purchasing the jackets and the shirts. And obviously, with the whole shift that's happening around the world, people are being a bit more careful with their money. And so they'll go retail, cheaper products, just what they can afford really. 
you mentioned that you sell to the wider world as well. A big story we ran today was about South Africa having also having a downturn in their economy. Do you see this kind of problems economically around the world? In Africa at the moment, I've only done weddings and engagements, etc. I've not sold to individuals. So the people that have always bought my clothing have been in bulk. So, for example, if you're doing a wedding, obviously for the bridegroom, the bridesmaids, etc. So, I've not really noticed anything or any difficulty in that area. Maybe we can say that because not in, not many individuals from Africa purchasing my clothes. We can say that maybe there's a shift there, there's a difficulty there in the economy. But that's my whole take on it really. At just 20 years old, you're very young for an entrepreneur. What kind of challenges have you faced as a, as a fledgling businessman? The first challenge I faced was obviously when you start something just as an idea and you don't have enough information on it, it can be a little bit difficult. So I was going into the clothing business against people who've been in it for a long time. I was with qualifications in business and I don't, it was just an idea that came from myself and friends. And so marketing, advertising, etc. is just things I have to do out of my own head and not out of the book really. That's my biggest difficulty. But it's not just business, it's not just clothing, you're also a passionate singer, right? I sing more than I do clothing business. Reason being I grew up singing in church and church is a big, major part of my life. And so I sing every Sunday, every Thursday and I've always done growing up. And so I've been inspired to do a gospel album and I've been working on that since the beginning of this year, as well as the clothing business. I'll say it's good for me because it's a part of my life, it's my, it's the way I live really. So if people want to hear you sing, where should they go? Uh, at the moment I sing regularly and weekly at my home church in Manchester, alongside Newton Street and Avenue. M12 for EY, that's the address. I also sing in different con youth conferences and different concerts around the country. So, whichever, whichever one of them, I would strongly advise the church room. In terms of the business, where do you see it going? How big can it really be? That's right, you are mine. So, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit, really. And if people want to buy a coat, it's getting chilly now, they want to go online and buy a coat. Where should they go to? They should go on my Facebook page at the moment. You can either type Sasha McCandy Jameson and click on MRJ Fashion or just search MRJ Fashion. Just on the search box on Facebook, it should come up. Okay. It'll come up with my face on it, one of the quotes, one of the shirts, whichever. Maybe. Fantastic. Sasha, thank you very much for thank joining us today. Cheers. Today's photo of the day comes from Tatenda Harry of his daughter Patricia. Keep your pictures coming in to our ATV Facebook page if you want to feature on the big screen. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.